Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the channel. We are here in Huntsville, Alabama, mm -hmm. after 1,900 miles. 1,900 miles. Actually, technically, it was 3,800 miles. No, that was because <laughs> we drove separately. <laughs> it was 1,900 miles, and uh, we're here for to help out our daughter and for the birth of our third grandchild, John. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do some projects mm -hmm. and help out uh, our daughter around the house. Yeah, getting everything prepped, um, do some meals, meal prep, meal cooking, and then just projects. And and also, we've got a lot of projects we need to do. We're gonna be here for about a month or until yeah. the baby's born, you know. You know, John doesn't understand. We have a schedule to keep. But yeah, so it's gonna be nice to be still for once. And, uh, and get some projects done. Yeah, for maybe about four or five weeks. Yeah. And we we're gonna have, have a, to hustle. We do have a hard stop date, so John better be here by then. <laughs> exactly, because when, uh, when June hits, we, we gotta be heading west. Yes. So what you're looking at is a brand new trailer connector plug. Because back in Tampa, if you remember, we didn't have our right turn signal and it was because of a loose pin and it looked it did look really bad so what I discovered when I got into here is that the the wires are really pulled on the plug uh, because of the cord that's coming from the front of the truck so I'm gonna need to make a, a change on that so I've added some cushioning right there on the on our dump tank but right down there as you can see uh, there's a strain as it makes that hard uh, left there and that's just because of space and because this wire has got a lot of tension on it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to install a gang box probably put it right here and I'll connect the plug into that gang and then I'll plug uh, connect the cord from the truck into that as well and that'll make an easier connection and it'll put less strain on that plug. So what are you doing? I am putting up a support for our camera cable because it's not as uh, robust as oh, our electrical. Okay. And it's been I've been using the electrical to support this. Yep. Yeah and I don't want to do that so I'm going to put the camera and probably the electrical on this support and then uh, if we make a turn then it oh that's cool <laughs> <laughs> cool you mean if if i make the turn <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you're you're gonna sandra proof that i'm, I'm trying <laughs> Say Oh, you're just so excited, aren't you? She's oh, I want to go on a road trip. So road excited. trip. Oh, road yes. trip. One of these days. <laughs> They're having a snack. Oh, that's they Minnie found me back there. Minnie and Mickey back they there. They found your cheeses. <laughs> Show Paca your really? cheeses. <laughs> huh? Where's Jocelyn? She's a. She's sitting very nicely having her snack, isn't she? <laughs> yes, she is. Look at you. Having your Cheez Its, my Cheez Its, are they good? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're good. <laughs> Snack time. <laughs> so, as we were running a set of experiments, the wires on the left side of the solenoid, the undervolted solenoid, pretty much fried. And once everything got cooled, um, David realized that all those wires were not tight and they didn't have the proper lock, lock nut on it so um, he's changed out the connectors and we're gonna fire everything up and hopefully it's gonna work if not then we're gonna have to order another solenoid and hopefully that won't take too long to get hopefully not well, back at the ranch. So the good news is we're running everything on shore power. And the only thing that runs solely off of our batteries is the air conditioner and 
for the cooktop, but I can always cook with gas. Anyhow, we're not totally without power. No. So I completed the project. What we discovered was these were not tight, didn't have the right nut on them, and this power cable, which is uh, coming from our charge side of the batteries, did not have a uh, basically a stress relief hanger. So this wire was flopping a little bit as we were traveling down the road. Loosened this, and with a loose connection, we had a lot of resistance and these connections here for the monitors basically fried or were almost fried. Uh, I repaired this and uh, it was warm but uh, I repaired it and it's now uh, in good working order. So system's working great. Uh, I put this stress relief hanger up there so it's locked in uh, this uh, cable and we're now good. Another project completed. So one of the many projects that we're working on, we have a new project that we <laughs> had to take care of. Yes, um, this was an unexpected project. Yeah. Our granddaughter wrecked her Jeep. <laughs> yes. She actually showed us where she wrecked yeah, it. Yeah, we got there and she's like, look, Nana Paca, this is where I crashed my Jeep. I'm, I'm like, like oh, oh, man. Oh. Now, which way were you going? Were you going this way? No, this way. That way. And you just crashed right into that step. Yeah. And she broke, not the front axle, but the like tie the rod. The tie rod on the front. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, you found a, Dave found a weld shop. Or yeah. It's not it, a weld it's, shop. It's, it's an it's, auto mod uh, shop. Yeah, where they convert cars and make them low riders. Show cars. Show cars. So we, uh, David, you dropped it off uh, last week, yep. and we're heading out there now to pick it up. Yeah, we'll see and if uh, he fixed it and if it's drivable. Yeah. I wonder if he's gonna make it go up and down. <laughs> That's his car. Oh my gosh. Yeah, they have no fear. Don't turn it on right now, please. What do you say to Jay who fixed your Jeep? Thank you. Mission accomplished? Mission accomplished. We've got the Jeep in tow. Whoops. <laughs> and uh, we'll take it home after lunch and plug it up, let it run, and see how it works. Yeah, we did a little test drive on the pavement and mm -hmm. worked great. This is Artemis giving birth <laughs> to a little girl. A little pink Jeep. Boy, it fits in there just perfectly, doesn't oh, it? It does, yeah, it does. All right, now we're just going to get Jocelyn to give it a test drive. Yes. Drum. So is that when you crash in the curb, you won't be launched out the front windshield? <laughs> well, you found the radio. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's going right to the spot. Why <laughs> not this <laughs> thing? Okay, push on the gas. The challenge is to get this out of the bedroom. Yes, it's a cat litter box. 
and somewhere where it's inconspicuous and out of the way. And that is the challenge for the day. So I've done this before in our house in Texas, so I'm going to try to do the, the same thing here. This is where a cat door will be installed out to the garage. And there it is, all installed. And now I'm going to make a place for the actual litter box. You want out? You can almost climb through that door, can't you? All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a little fancy thing and make it sort of dual purpose. Uh, this is a cabinet we got at Lowe's, and we got it for half price. There's a reason why we got it for half price. Uh, yeah, there's a crack all the way down. But that's okay because... Um, yeah, I can take this crack and I'll cut it and actually brace it up on the top here. The back doesn't need to be closed in because it's for the cat uh, litter box. Uh, so uh, we'll be, um, be using that and it should be good. The goal is to take the drawer, put it on the bottom, and then take the doors and stick them up top, basically flip-flop them, so we can put the cat litter box in the drawer and then pull it in and out. So we're on our way to the strawberry farm, a little family road trip. Ooh. Yay! Ooh. The girls, Jocelyn, are you excited about getting some strawberries? Yeah. Yeah. Where's Jules? She's got her shoes off. Uh oh. Of course. Of course. Got a little more time with you, baby. Walking out to the strawberry fields to pick some strawberries. Juliet has discovered the world of strawberry picking. Not as much picking as there is eating. Oh, she's picking plenty. <laughs> but she's eating. None of them are making it to the bucket, though. backup camera monitor the camera still worked the monitor was going on the fritz uh, it wouldn't turn on it wouldn't turn off uh, we we're having issues with it so I'm um, looking at replacing it I've got a dash uh, molding uh, that will doesn't really fit in there yet uh, but I've got to make some modifications and that's what I'm working on right now, to get the monitor to fit in the uh, dash so it looks factory. All right, so I had to get the Dremel out. And after doing some modifications, uh, this is not installed, but it's close to the uh, finished product. So pretty happy with it. It's, uh, I think it's better than the other one. So I completed the backup camera monitor install and it works and lights up things in the back. We can see where we're going. This also connects to the trailer as well as the rear of the truck. And I uh, finished off the molding and uh, it, I think it looks good. 
and it's uh, better than the old one. It's a little more clear. So uh, I've got that checked off the list. So after 15 years, our printer finally pooped out on us and David ordered a new one and hopefully it's gonna fit. Right, of course the printer had to have very specific dimensions to fit in our space because mm -hmm. we're full time. But the, that's not the cool thing. The cool thing's not the printer. The cool thing is that, you know when you get a package mm -hmm. and they've wrapped it up and they've got the styrofoam and they've wrapped it up and everything and you look at that and you go, man, how in the heck am I gonna get it out of that box, right? So these are not all one piece. They're like, you just pull them out. Yeah, try putting really it nice. back together. And, and you don't have to wrestle with this in the plastic. It has handles. handles. Oh, like a shopping bag. Look at that. And then you just lift it out. Wow. Okay, tell me that's not cool. That's this pretty is, cool. This is super cool. I like it. So the critical part is the dimensions. Hmm. So it's um, it's a little deeper. Yeah, but with those wires, you but can tell the where wires, the wires smashed up against the uh, wall. Right, exactly. So, so I'm thinking the wires come out on the side on this one, okay, which well, might be good. Yeah. And then it's not as as wide. Um, this is a little from side shallow, to side. From side to side. Okay. Yeah. That's kind of cool, recess. And this one has a paper tray. Yes, like a hundred sheet paper tray. Ooh. Yeah. Is it flush against the back? And then it'll push it forward. Ooh, nice. Oh, and it's even shorter, I think. Yes, yes, so should I get be a little my, shorter. Uh, try my laptop. Oh, ooh! Gold star! Woo! Yay! Very, oh, I can't wait to try it.
like it so much. <laughs> well, that's actually a cute picture right there. Fancy accommodations in the hospital room. Jordan gets the really nice bed. But... The visitor. The visitor also gets a bed. Hmm, where might it be? Oh. Voila. Who's here? <gasps> Mommy. And your little brother. Yeah. Baby John is here. Are you going to say welcome home, baby John? I'm warm. <laughs> no. Stars and stripes, Memorial Day. Yeah. Memorial Day. Yes. Welcome home. I can touch my toes again. Oh my goodness. Yay. Woo. Come on, let's go say hi to your brother. We've been having fun. Yes. That's the sign of fun. Yeah, that's your baby brother. <laughs> Are you excited, Jasmine? Yeah. All right. You gonna give him a kiss? Right in the eye socket. Is that still recording? Yes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll edit that out. <laughs> oh. What do I have? I've got a... Uh, uh... Well, for those of you... Eh. So after 15 years... Our printer, um, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> That's a blooper. <laughs> We're keeping that. That's gold. <laughs> You're awful. You know that? <laughs>